summer sound of first class in the record of beach, baby. Yeah, man. My music background is zero. <laughs> I never took music at school or anything like that. Do you remember back in old LA? Oh. I got bought a guitar by my parents when I was quite youngish. And so it went from there. I just learned to get some stuff out of the guitar and suddenly that developed into songs. And went to school in Birmingham and I, I got involved with, with Ken Lewis and we were writing songs from Birmingham. We decided that uh, we needed to go down to London in order to make things happen. That's where the music business was. Become famous. And become famous. Beach baby, beach baby, there on the sand from July to the end of September. Well, I wrote with quite a few people. There was Ken, as you say, it was um, Tony McCauley, yeah, Russell Alquist. I mean, it was a case of we were all friends, and uh, it wasn't, wasn't a case of uh, I must try and write with him. We were friends, and someone said, Oh, I've got this idea for a song. Do you fancy working on it? And I'd work on it with them. You know, if you start songwriting, you never know what's going to happen. You may, you may think. Yeah, I, I think I'm writing good songs, but nothing may happen. When you get a hit, you start to think, oh, I can do it. I mean, other people recorded your songs, yours and Ken's yes. songs to start yeah. with, but then yeah. you recorded your own songs quite a lot more. Yeah, you? yeah. But at the beginning, you just imagine yourself as a songwriter writing for other people. That sold over a, a million in America. Um, but you'd already recorded it anyway. Done a recording of it, but when, when they heard it, they thought this is perfect for us. So that was a little bit of soul. A little bit of soul. Because they were round and popular when I was starting to write, and I thought it'd be great to write something for them. And uh, they took it, and it was a hit. Mickey Most was in charge of Herman's Herman. It was Mickey Most persuasion, yeah. though, wasn't it? He yeah. was uh, producing. Herman at the time. Yeah. He knew him quite well, so he yeah. would get on to you for any would, new stuff, like with Brenda Lee, yeah. when she was coming over to England from the States to record. That's right. And he was going to produce her, so he asked you to come to up write with a song. A song. Yeah. When I left school, I went to Secretarial College. And at the end of the year, they had a sort of interview procedure. You could decide from a list of people where you wanted to work. And I'd always been interested in music, but it was classical music. So I went for an interview at the company um, I ended up in, which was a very well-known contemporary uh, classical music, uh, Viennese-based um, publishing house in Soho. And I worked there for, well, until well after we got married. And then I left and John, by that time, had got an office in Old Compton Street in Soho. And John was established already as a writer. So we met through John having, uh, in his early days, worked there as a, on a temporary basis until he got established in the music business. And we met in passing on the stairs one day. But and also, I said, oh, this is a nice bird. <laughs> Hello, darling. We had a mutual friend working there as well, a friend of, that um, John had known for some time. So we got introduced through him. The, the other thing was writing for um, commercials, which actually was better than writing a song because you earn more money from that because a song may not be a hit or, you know, but if you write something for commercial, it goes on air. Well, you, you, you knew someone would use it because you were commissioned yes. to do the music for a particular TV ad. So that kept me going for a long time. We were still living in um, Park Street in right in the middle of town, yeah. Um, yeah. Until 1971. 
when we moved to Sheen, in the country. We had started to write while I was working at the office in Soho, you know, but John was working with other writers and yeah. was involved in some productions and singing and playing. Mm. So, and you were writing, and I was writing with you then. Mm. Not, it wasn't immediately when we moved down to Sheen mm -hmm. that I thought, I'm a bit bored with housework. Yeah. I think I fancy writing songs. You know, I'd, I'd been writing before then, easily translate into a commercial song, you know, just Xing the, the lyrics because that's the advertising agency's copyright, so nothing to do with, say, the Vauxhall Chevette, which was one of the songs that we turned into you know, a record of production, which was you know, more or less exactly the same orchestration but with different lyrics. As it transpired, it was the biggest hit up to that time yes. that we had written together. I'd been writing with Ken, you know, since leaving school. Then suddenly Ken retired. When I started writing Beach Baby, I thought maybe Joe would like to have a go. But, uh, that wasn't actually the first song that we tried, though. Well, it wasn't, but uh, amongst the yeah. first things. Mm. And I said, I'll have a go at this. And I think I just left it with you. And well, I mean, you always wrote the music first and I had no input on that at all. I just, you know, got a cassette with a track on voice and maybe, you know, guitar or not even any lyrics, just a sort of nonsense words, you know. Um, and John would tell me what vaguely the style was and what he had in mind for it. And then I just listened to it over and over again. That was only the reason why I concentrated on doing it. I managed to to finish the lyrics in you know, an afternoon because I, um, it was the final of the, the men's uh, Wimbledon on uh, 1973 in July. And I was um, not interested in that because I think there were two players that had come up by surprise, you know, they'd worked their way to the, the final and it that weren't the big names. And I thought, oh, I can't be bothered to watch. So I came out into the garden and just sat in, in the sun and wrote non-stop, you know, and uh, just, you know, finished it. Um, apart from the few tweaks that John always likes to give to any of the, rec the songs, any of the lyrics that I write, you know, he says that doesn't sing right. Or, we, no, you have to I'm get things to sing right, you know, with, yeah, with songs. I understand. If it doesn't sing right, change it. I was a bit of a novice, so I didn't understand that, and not being a singer myself, you know, I, I didn't sing along with it, so it was something that you had, you had to tell me to say, mm. that's, that's not right, can you change that? But that was the, you know, more or less the end, I finished it in the afternoon, and whatever tweaks you made to it, you did. Yeah, and she was amazingly cheap. Yes, um, <laughs> and, and available. <laughs> The theme of it, Beach Baby, was based on the magazines that I'd seen when I was as a teenager, where they were American, specifically for teenage girls, one called Seventeen, and you could only get them from a, a newsstand in, um, in the centre of London, Marble Arch, and I, whenever I was up there I used to buy one, and they were full of wonderful pictures of you know, girls in bikinis having a great time on beaches with surfing guys and um, going around in you know, big open, huge, glossy, gas-guzzling cars. And uh, that was just sort of in the back of my mind and my imagination just elaborated that. Very, the very spot we are on, that's, that's the very one. Jonathan King's, yeah, UK yes. records. Yeah, but that didn't happen until it was released, which he wanted to keep back until the following year because I think you produced it in October yeah. of 73 and presented it to Jonathan and he said this is an absolute smash for the summer. I think he took out loads of ads saying this is the UK, Britain's number one next summer hit. Yeah. And he said, you know, we, we will delay release until the summer. 
and he was absolutely right, you know, spot so we on. You had to wait all that time. Before, yeah, you? we weren't doing, we were doing other things, so it was yeah. a case of yeah. we knew we had a good record, but um, it was just left to do that. But I think it was a lot to do with its success that it was released just at that time. If you write a song, you want other people to hear it. And, and you're excited about it. And, excited, yeah. And it was a really exciting production. Yeah. I knew a lot of people in the business and I knew how good they were and um, if I was doing a, a record somewhere I'd try and get all the good people. Especially doing lead with Tony. Yeah, you know you got, you got the best people that you could to come and sing on, on your record and I'd worked with all these people because you know I got involved in doing backing vocals for other people. And so I met all these other people who were doing the same kind of thing. And uh, when we started recording ourselves, then I'd obviously use those people because I knew they were... Well, you had a little good. team, really. Yeah, it was a huge hit, and it was a hit all over. All, all around the world. Anybody could do a version. You know. It was if it was a translation needed, they would have to get permission from the publisher. But that got out of our hands, wasn't it? As far as yeah, we were yeah. grateful that yeah. someone would you big know, star record your song in, in France or something, and it'd be a big hit over there. You, how can you uh, not enjoy that? <laughs> What's not to like? Yeah. <laughs> We should get a blue plot. <laughs> Where do we go for our money? <laughs>